Hey guys, Furum here, and today I'm going to be testing the Ital Design Zero Uno in multiplayer in Forza Horizon 4 in S1 class. The tune I'm using was made by ESV Suomen, and my decal was made by XPro PR18. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already, and be sure to check out my Furum Clips channel, as well as the Purple Team Discord. The links to those will be in the description, and I hope you enjoy these races. Joining us in our first race on Greendale Super Sprint are Flame in his Bentley Continental, Career GT in his Carrera, Tangram in his RX-7 Spirit R, Skipper in his Zero Uno as well, and Race Plays in his Ascari KZ-1R, which did very well throughout most of these races and was not really a car that I knew about before. And then we have Flame and his Bentley who kind of was sliding around a lot because that car can't handle all that great, as you can see right there. The Ital Design Zero Uno is a car that sort of flies under the radar in both Asphalt 9 and Forza, and for decent reason I would say. You see, in Asphalt 9, it is almost the definition of like the most average B-Class car you can find, along with the Ferrari 488 GTB, which is actually slightly better than the Zero Uno, I believe. In Forza Horizon 4, it kind of takes that same middling kind of approach to its class. However, I personally did have a lot of success with it, better than some of the other cars I have tested for sure, and I gotta say, even though it doesn't really excel in any aspect, just like in Asphalt 9, it is quite well-rounded overall, it's easy to drive, it's fairly stable and grounded, and I have to say, although it wasn't the most fun car I've driven by any means, it definitely did the job a lot of the time, and I could pretty much rely on it to do what I wanted, even if it wasn't the fastest. And I found this really cool purple decal that has almost the exact same purple as I usually make, but with an added Italian flag stripe going down the middle of it, which is where, as you might be able to expect from the name Ital Design, this company is based. Here we can see that Race's car definitely has better acceleration than mine, and that's why he's able to pull ahead fairly well after some of these turns. Then we have Skipper, also in his Ital design, who's catching up very close as well. All the races in this video are quite close, and I would say that I'm pretty proud of my driving and my positions in these races, especially considering that this car isn't really one that you hear about a lot as being a really good one. I think this also was partially because Arno and Rio couldn't make it this week. If they could, they would always be in first and second, and therefore my first and second place finishes would turn into third and fourth place finishes, but let's not think about that. In our next race on Derwent Reservoir Sprint, we are joined by Shadow Reaper and Meaty Potato, since I finally figured out how to invite people to a session in the middle of a lobby. If you would like to join these lobbies, go to the Special Roles channel of the Purple Team Discord. There you will find a Forza Horizon 4 emote, which you can click, and you will be added to the Forza role, which I will ping every time. Time I do one of these lobbies. In six and a half hours after this video goes live, so at 4.30 p.m. GMT on October 9th, I will be hosting a lobby with the 2014 Lamborghini Urus in S1 class. Now, as many of you guys know, and some of you guys may not, the Lamborghini Urus is one of my favorite cars, besides the Mustang and especially the Shelby variants of it, because I really like Lamborghini and I really like powerful SUVs, and it's, well, the perfect combination of the two. So I'll be testing that off road mainly in cross country because it is more geared toward rally. So presumably it will be our first fully cross country recording. Now if that appeals to you this would definitely be the one to go for because I probably will not be making all that many more Forza Horizon 4 videos and I'm sure we'll still get meaty doing stuff like that in Forza Horizon 5 though, because Forza Horizon 5 is coming out in just about four weeks from now. Since I pre-ordered the Ultimate Edition, I will gain access to it on either the 4th or the 5th, don't remember which, but it's a few days early. And I will likely be transitioning most of my Forza recordings over to Forza Horizon 5. Now, if there's some special car or something that's only in 4 that I still want to test, or I just want to play it again for nostalgia's sake, maybe we'll see another Forza Horizon and four video here and there. I'm certainly not discounting that at all, and honestly, it will probably happen. For the most part, we'll be switching to Forza Horizon 5 after the game releases. But before then, I have a couple of other special Forza Horizon 4 videos that I plan to release, and I was talking to some members of my community not long before doing this voiceover, and Skipper thought of an idea of using the old Supra in the final, like, regular car review I do before Forza Horizon 5 comes out. And then, starting off Forza Horizon 5 with my first car review being the new Supra 
Sprout, which is in that game. So that is kind of the plan. Unfortunately, I will be away in two weekends, which is when I would normally be doing my next Forza Horizon for recording. So most likely I'll be holding a special session after my stream this coming weekend so that we can get that recorded and I can post it sometime before Forza Horizon 5 releases. In this next set of races, we've had some people switch their cars around. Meaty Potato is now in his NSXR, Tangram is in his GTR, Carrera is still in his Carrera, Flame is in a Huracan because I think he got tired of that Bentley kinda not handling well, Race is still in the Ascari, Skipper is in an Aventador, which in my opinion is somewhat similar in looks and in general to this car right here, which I'm testing now, pretty interesting, and then we have Shadow Reaper in the Alfa Romeo 155. Shadow Reaper always goes for the faster cars that might not, you know, be able to be as stable, but typically if you can still drive them well, they can get up to a very high speed, and therefore in some tracks, as we will see perhaps in the next race, do extremely well. In this race, we are on Ambleside Sprint, which I would not think of as a typical track that I would enjoy, because generally speaking, I like the straighter tracks, or the ones that have a good balance maybe of straighter sections and then twistier sections. These hairpin turns are not typically something that I really enjoy. But for whatever reason, on Ambleside Sprint, I'm usually able to do fairly well. And this was the first race in quite a while that I actually managed to stay in first place throughout a majority of the entire race. It's super rare that I don't see somebody on the map ahead of me. Or it stays that way for like 50% of the race, and then I mess up around the halfway point and somebody passes me because they don't mess up. That's happened to me more often than I'd like to admit, but thankfully in this race that did not happen and I come toward the finish line still in first to take the victory, which wasn't something that I honestly expected because before these lobbies I was told that this car wasn't the most amazing, like it was pretty good but it wasn't too great. And yet, I had some of the best races that I've had in any car recently in this one. I don't know, just very interesting. Now we're moving on to our final race, which is on the Meadow Sprint. And here we will get to see the power of Shadow Reaper's car. So as I was talking about earlier with those couple other Forza Prize and 4 videos that I'm going to be making on top of the regular multiplayer reviews, it's safe to say that there's going to be a good bit of Forza content coming soon. I am just really enjoying this game, and I know I'll enjoy Forza Horizon 5 when it comes out, and I've gotten pretty frustrated with Asphalt 9 recently, don't worry, the Asphalt 9 content isn't going anywhere, like I've said previously, I still plan for it to be my primary content, and I have some videos recorded and that I'm planning to upload this week in that game. But it's just kind of falling out of the first priority for me, I don't know, it's kind of weird to say. But it's just been so difficult to do anything or get anything in that game recently, no matter how much time I spend in it, that it's just become increasingly difficult to make good content in. I'm sure most of you guys know exactly what I mean. However, I will still try to make videos as much as I can, especially, you know, in the free try seasons and stuff like that, just to show you what the new cars are capable of. Even though I don't think I'm really going to be able to unlock a lot of the new cars, just because the requirements have become crazy. Either there's a ton of Gold Max cars required in the special events, or the Drive Syndicates require 50,000 tokens to unlock a car, or their Legend Pass cars. It's, it's just a bunch of stuff that free-to-play players such as myself might find very difficult to overcome. Now, I'm not going to give up. I'm still going to keep saving my tokens and trying to get something good. We should be able to get the Volkswagen Electric R without a problem after sandbagging, so things are going okay, and you can definitely expect some more Asphalt 9 content coming very soon. But also Forza content. Stay on the lookout for that as we have a very close battle with Carrera at the last second. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like the video if you've enjoyed and consider subscribing for more Asphalt and other games content. And I will see you in my next video. Goodbye!